The most important feature of this new device for me is the 90Hz refresh rate. So naturally, that's the first thing I wanted to check out immediately after unboxing the device. And it looks really good, fluid, fast and responsive. So hi guys, let's talk about the Realme 6. For many Kenyans, Realme is a new name they've never heard of. So naturally, this new entrant to the Kenyan market will face a hard task selling their brand name. If you've never heard of Realme, there are a couple of things you should know. Here's a quick breakdown. First, they're part of BBK Electronics, which also owns OnePlus, Oppo, Vivo, and another brand called Aiku. Aiku, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, they broke out of Oppo in 2018, becoming an independent brand. And as you'll notice in the video, Realme UI almost looks exactly as Color OS from Oppo. The Realme 6 is a mid-range device that stands out. It is the first under 30,000 device in the Kenyan market with a high refresh rate display, and it packs a couple of good specifications. You get a 90 Hz 6.5 2400 by 1080 display with Gorilla Glass 3 protection. You get 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of uh, UFS 2.1 storage, a 4300 mAh battery supporting 30 watt VOOC charge and all this is powered by a Helio G90T processor. In terms of cameras, at the back you get four lenses, a 64 megapixel main sensor supporting electronic image stabilization, an 8 megapixel ultra wide shooter, a 2 megapixel macro lens and an extra 2 megapixel dedicated black and white sensor. At the front, you get a 16 megapixel shooter. If you're wondering where the fingerprint scanner is, it's on the side. It is fast and has worked well for me through the first few days I've been using this device. The scanner is also the power button and under settings, you can choose between a light touch to unlock the phone or a firmer hard press. I chose the hard press because it makes more sense for me that way. On the other side, there's the volume up and down button and the SIM tray, which includes two SIM card slots and one microSD card slot. Being my first time interacting with Realme devices, here are a couple of things I've taken note of. First, high refresh rate is very important. Though you cannot see the difference through video, you can definitely feel the difference when interacting with the phone. This is an already pretty fast device with 8 gigs of RAM and the Helio G90T. But when you make the switch to the 90 hz refresh rate, it feels even snappier. Scrolling feels different. Response time is almost instantaneous and I don't think one would want to switch back to 60 hz after trying 90. Originally, I thought higher refresh rates were a gimmick. Now I don't. There's a definite improvement to the smartphone experience with higher refresh rates. And I think this will be the thing that every phone will copy in the future. In terms of battery, since unboxing, I set my device on 90 hz locked and I've not ne noticed any serious drains that I can complain about. The second thing I've noticed is that Realme UI is just color OS. The interface uh, will make you confuse this phone for an Oppo phone, should you not know which device you're using. I mean, of course, this company was part of Oppo for a long time, but ever since the separation, things seem to have remained the same. You even find a folder named color OS under file manager. I just hope Realme sends out Android updates on time so that they don't risk becoming a good phone brand with a bad reputation for updating their smartphones. Currently, the phone has already received the July 2020 security patch. I don't like the fact that Realme includes a lot of blotter on their devices. Though many of the apps are easy to delete, some are suggestions from Realme's own app store and there's no way to remove or hide them. My solution has been to remove all the apps I don't know and do not intend on using then disable features I don't want like Smart AI and others, uh, including a drawer, and then using a custom launcher. I use Novel Launcher, which gives the device a cleaner look. I've also installed Messages by Google, which I prefer over Realme's own message app. 
because uh, Realme's own app doesn't support things like being able to copy uh, authentication codes and the like. The third thing I've noticed is that the 30 watt fast charging is amazing. One thing you have to give it up to every company under BBK Electronics is fast charging. In a time where some companies are planning on removing chargers from the box, the included 30 watt charging brick is really good. It took me 30 minutes to have my phone from zero, which is completely dead to 57%. In another test, it charged the phone from 44% to 65% in about 10 minutes. I love that this is over USB-C, which means I only need to carry one charger when traveling. Okay, so talking about traveling, I recently had the chance to travel and I took this time to sort of stress test the device to see how good the battery will perform over a long period of time. So over the period of time, I decided to take screenshots at different points of the day to see uh, the battery levels later on. And here are some of the results I noticed. So it's 6.46 AM, uh, battery is currently 96%. Uh, let's see how long this battery lasts during this trip. At 8.35 AM, the phone was at 91%. At around 9.16 a.m. it was 84%, then it was 82% at around 10 a.m. And at around 4.45 p.m. it was about 55%. At around 6 p.m. it had dropped to 47%. And at around 8.43 p.m. it was at 36%. By the time I took out the charger at 11.45 p.m. Uh, the phone was at 24%. Remember, I was using the phone throughout the day to check photos and videos, share them around, a couple of minutes browsing social media, listen to music over the headphones, and throughout the day it was connected to the Mi Band 5. So a whole day of use is very possible with the 4300 milliamp battery, and this was all well the device was set at 90 hertz refresh rate. Now let's talk about cameras. I took a lot of photos and videos through this trip. One thing I noticed is that the camera uh, still has issues with how it handles dynamic range, but it can take really good photos provided you're patient. The landscape shots look really good in my eyes, and even though detail is not kept uh, when you zoom in, you still uh, get a really good picture as a whole without zooming. However, the camera shines best in portrait photos from my interaction. Yes, the blur is not always perfect, uh, but with some patience, good lighting, and a steady hand, one can take quite good pictures. While working on this video, there's something I wanted to uh, mention. Uh, I wanted to talk about optical image stabilization because from uh, interacting with the phone, the videos were pretty stable. Then while Googling and I realized uh, the device doesn't actually support OIS, instead it has EIS electronic image stabilization. Even in a shaky terrain where the vehicle is uh, sort of jumping around, a video uh, from the camera looks really stabilized. You can shoot your videos either at 720, 1080 or 4K. Uh, you can only shoot 60 FPS while the device is locked at 1080. Uh, and I am not sure about the 4K uh, frame rates, but you can shoot 4K videos. The issue I noticed with the videos are the same issues I noticed with the pictures. The phone uh, struggles with dynamic range, sometimes blowing out the highlights. Okay, let's conclude the video. This is a great device for its price point. Uh, though Realme hasn't told me the official price, there is a couple of listings on Jumia for the 8 gigs of RAM version uh, that uh, list the device for about 28,000, some, some listing it for up to 29,000. The official pricing of the device will be shared on the description once Realme uh, shares uh, the recommended price. Realme's move into the smartphone market in Kenya uh, will bring in more competition to all the players in the smartphone space. Realme uh, brings in uh, really quality smartphones and really good prices and uh, just good uh, customer convincing and with good branding and with good advertisement i think they could reach a lot of people they currently have a couple of devices including the c3 the c11 and a, a sort of smart band and we'll be talking about that in the future so thank you very much guys for watching and subscribe